Thank you very much, BC, here from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. 12 rounds or less for a vacant 130-pound title. Ray Vargas undefeated at 36-0 with 22 knockouts, attempting to become the 11th Mexican male boxer to win a title in three divisions. Meanwhile, Oshaki Foster, 19-2 with 11 knockouts. He gets his first crack at a major title here in his home state. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Well, fans, the time has come for the featured bout of the evening, the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Let's welcome the boxers as they make their way to the ring. First, from Houston, Texas, here is the WBC number one ranked contender. Please welcome Oshaki Foster. in his home of Orange, Texas, watching Terrence Crawford on TV and telling all of his cellmates that, hey, I'm going to be a champion one day. You watch. Don't call it a comeback. But since being shot twice on Showbox, he relocated to Houston, working with a new trainer now in Bobby Benton, has won nine straight and is looking to become the first belt holder from a place Foster. Uh, what I want to see today from him is to be offensively aggressive, being that he is the bigger fighter. Vargas is the one moving up to his weight, and let's hope we see that tonight for Foster. The longest winning streak of his career in his last fight. He outpointed previously unbeaten Southpaw Mohamed Yakubov over 12 rounds last March in Dubai. And Al Bernstein's been talking about it throughout the night, calling Foster a shapeshifter. In that fight, he fought multiple styles. It's, it's not like Al, it's like Al said, he doesn't change style fight to fight. It's round to round. And boy, he'll be looking to be devil and a bee dazzle everyone in attendance tonight as he looks to win his first title. And now making his way to the ring from Otumba, Mexico, here is the undefeated two-division champion of the world, Ray Vargas. Me enseñó que mi destino era rodar y rodar. Rodar y rodar, rodar y rodar. Después me di 
dijo un arriero que no hay que llegar primero, pero hay que saber llegar. Con dinero y sin dinero hago siempre lo que quiero y mi palabra se la haré. No tengo trono ni reina, ni nadie que me comprenda. Mariachi Azteca de América, serenating away Vargas as he walks to the ring, the same ring where he became a 126-pound belt holder last year here at the Alamo Dome tonight, moving up in weight, looking to win the vacant 140-pound title, 7-0 and in championship fights, Al. All seven have gone to 12-round distance. And, and that's a very salient point because he believes that that championship experience is the difference in this fight, and we've chronicled that this is the first opportunity for uh, a Shaki uh, Foster, and so he believes that experience is going to be the difference for him. His MO always the same, loves to control the range with his jab, pile up points with his long arm counters, but again, as you continue to go up and weigh, your physical advantages are minimized, oh, Shaki Foster, I'm going to try to... Try to tame Ray Vargas and hand him his first loss here tonight as we go to the tail of the tape out. Well, that's a perfect lead in to numbers. And, you know, even though he's going up in weight, here he is fighting, he still has a height advantage. And the interesting thing is the reach, though, this is one of the few times he's facing a fighter that has the same reach as him, even though Foster's shorter. We'll see if that has an impact in this fight. And the rules for tonight's championship fight. Only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell. And the fight becomes official after four completed rounds. From the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, it's time for the main event. It's time for Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Alamo Dome here in San Antonio, Texas, as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by TGB Promotions and Showtime, sponsored by DraftKings Sportsbook. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC, President Mauricio Suleiman, Supervisor Rex Ross Walker, along with the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulations. The chairman is Rick Figueroa, Executive Director Mike Aris Mendes, Combat Sports Manager Greg Alvarez. Our judges scoring from ringside, from Nevada, Tim Cheatham. From Mexico, Alejandro Rochin. And from Oklahoma, David Sutherland. Introducing our third man of the ring, our referee in charge of the action, John Shorley. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from beautiful San Antonio, Texas, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first, on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing purple trunks with black and white trim, fighting out of Houston by way of Orange, Texas. He weighed in at 129 and one half pounds. His record stands at 19 wins, two losses, with 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, seeking his 10th consecutive victory in his first attempt at a world title, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the WBC number one rank contender known as Ice Water, introducing Oshaki Foster. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing dark green trunks with white and gold trim and hailing from Otumba, Mexico. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 129 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 36 wins, no losses, 22 wins coming by way of knockout. 
Tonight, he is seeking his third weight division world title. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the two division world champion and the current undefeated WBC featherweight champion of the world, introducing Ray Vargas. Once again, it's our referee in charge now to give instructions, John Shorley. Okay, both these trunks are a little bit high. Mr. Vargas, Mr. Foster, this fighting for the WBC world title. Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. John Shorley, 30 years pro experience, working his 593rd professional fight. The 32-year-old Ray Vargas went on the road to win his first title in 2017 at 122 pounds. Won another title last year here at the Alamo Dome. Can he make it? Titles in three different divisions tonight. Should Foster win, he will become the 88th Showbox alum to win a championship. You ready? You ready? The bell in round one and... This fight for one of the titles that Shakur Stevenson had to vacate due to his inability to make the 130-pound championship limit before last September's fight against Robson Conceição, which Stevenson won by lopsided unanimous decision. Now, one of the titles he vacated was filled last week when Emmanuel Navarrete defeated Liam Wilson. And now, there are so many similarities in yes. between Vargas and Navarrete. Yeah, here's uh, Vargas also from Mexico trying to become the next three-time champion as Navarrete did. And, uh, this division has taken a lot of spice now, and um, Oshaki Foster would like to add some spice himself to it. He, of course, is the man that's been at this weight class. And this very first round, we're seeing Foster, you know, come in as a right-hander. Yep. Interesting because I, you know, I thought he was going to come in as a lefty to, you know, get Vargas a different, a different type of face, you know. But uh, doing a good job right now, Foster putting that pressure. Something that I, I want to see from Foster being aggressive. He started orthodox against Yakubov in his last fight, but we, he was much better from a southpaw stance against that type of fighter in Yakubov. And by the way, 130-pound belt holders Navarrete, Hector Luis Garcia, and Shavkat Rakimov, who are the uh, others who lay claim to this throne. Yeah, so Oshaki Foster is kind of like the weather in Chicago, my hometown. <laughs> Just give him a second, he'll change. <laughs> No, but, you know, he is doing good right now with yeah. that, that, that stance. Bothering Vargas with that jab. He talked about the distance, the similarities. I mean, the jab is getting for Foster. Neither, neither man is a, invests a lot in the body. They're not huge body punchers, but they both are very effective at uh, getting to the head. A minute left. In the opening round, Vargas, as expected, looking to establish that pull cue jab. And there's a nice right hand over the top by Foster that lands. Beautiful timing from Foster there. Vargas got to be careful with that size. I've never seen him do that. I've never seen him with that guard, that, you know, the that shoulder that roll. Shoulder roll. That's something new, and you know, he ate a right hand there, so he's got to be careful. Of course, Floyd Mayweather used it to incredible success, and not always easy. It's not no, easy not to not employ the shoulder roll. 15 seconds left here in the first frame. Oh, there's Bargas going to the body. these men have to do to win this matchup? We'll look at the keys to victory. For Vargas, no wide punches. If he throws wide hooks and right hands, he'll get countered by Foster. We saw a little evidence of that. Wants to win the battle of the jabs. It's nip and tuck so far. And the right hand. He has a terrific right hand, Ray Vargas, and he wants to get that punch in. Probably his best power punch. 
for Foster. Mix it up, and by that, I mean give him different looks. Yeah, yeah, you know, lefty, yeah, righty, aggressor for a little while. Then box, anxious, needs to smart. stay off Don't the ropes because Vargas touched. is very effective at picking you off you. if you get there. And the counter take a deep left a hand if he's a lefty or the counter right, right hand if you're, he's a righty, he has a really good one. And uh, we'll see that in evidence tonight. Round number two, Vargas' head trainer for all of his pro fights until tonight was the Hall of Famer Nacho Bettestein, and this is his first fight where he has his father, Carlos Vargas, as his head trainer. He trained his son throughout his amateur career and was an assistant to Bettestein. Yeah, the dad's always been part of this team, obviously, trained him when he was a kid, and he just felt it was the right decision. Another, another man, noticeable man in this corner is Marco Antonio Barreras. Uh, older brother that is in Vargas Corner. And Foster trained by Bobby Benton, the 44-year-old former mm -hmm. boxer, trains Regis Progre, a 140-pound belt holder, and was the trainer of the now-retired heavyweight contender, Lou Savarizzo. Oh, and Vargas gets tripped up, and referee Shirley. I'm sorry to say that. Oh, that really knocked him. That's that's him. I disagree. I do. That was a knockdown, and he hit him right in the chest, right in the body. He went down. Vargas has been down four times officially in his career. Yeah, well, you can make a case for it. He's making a good case, yeah. and I think you can. And here's the interesting thing. This is what I say about Foster. He came out in this round kind of pushing the pace against Vargas, whereas he boxed in the last uh, round. So he gives you different looks. Stop. And see the difference Stop. when, right. when Vargas, you, Vargas is used to fighting smaller fighters. Yes, yes height, height, uh, Foster than the height is smaller than Vargas, but he's got that reach. So every yes. time he steps back, Vargas is not, not able to land anything because he's not there. That's exactly right. We, and that's why you have to note that reach and we know this. It's, it makes a difference. Foster lands another right, and now Vargas goes to the body with the right. And both the speed and the beautiful double jab and that right hand down the middle by Foster. So the speed and the crispness of Foster on display. Vargas yet not found his rhythm. Final minute of the second. Vargas lunging forward, going to the body. Foster utilizing good footwork on his back foot now and again. Can go from back foot to foot on the pressure, showing you different wrinkles throughout the foot. Break. Thank you. Playing too defensively, waiting for Foster to throw. He's got to be first. Misses with that right hand. Does Vargas under 30 seconds left in the second? A lot of fainting. Strong second round for Shockey Foster. 14 of 58 compared to 4 of 27 for Ray Vargas. So in the last round, uh, when Vargas went down, we're going to see a jab from Foster, but we're also going to see the legs of these two fighters kind of get tangled up. He steps on the foot of Vargas, and it is interesting that he did get the jab in there, but yeah. it may have been the foot. It's hard to no, tell it whether it was the foot that, that sent him down. And who can see it better than the referee that's inside? He saw it. We're going to see the replay here. And, you know, yeah. it is. there was a jab in there, and it probably did land to the stomach. So the, But the, the, the clashing of the feet probably caused that, and that's why the referee ruled that way. So it was a judgmental call. I got it. Round number three, Oshaki Foster's nickname, Ice Water. He's been as cool as ice thus far here in his first title fight. Ray Vargas doesn't have a nickname. A lot of people think Ray is his nickname. It means king. And, and while we're on the subject, I want to give a special quick shout out to my former pro wrestling broadcast partner, Jerry the King Lawler. Wish him a speedy recovery. You got this, King. Good for you. You all want to see him get better. 
You know, it's interesting. Foster has stayed righty yes. for most yes. of this, uh, for all of this fight. And I got you. you I know, got you. Vargas hasn't Stop. faced a lefty in almost 10 years. <laughs> so we all thought Foster would test him as a left-hander at some point, and he probably will. But he always does the unexpected, doesn't he? He does. He does. And yeah, just a matter of time before he does that. But it's working for him right now. Yeah. What he's doing. You don't need and to another do thing, another this. thing out is the keys to victories that you had. He is avoiding those ropes. Foster is staying away from the ropes. Mm -hmm. he, Vargas will get you when you're on the ropes. He's long and lean, and uh, he's got the reach. Foster doing a good job of avoiding the reach. Yes. Of I got you. I got and here's the danger for Rick. Vargas. You know, he's been a boxer puncher his whole career, done a fantastic job. But when he has to be the aggressor against the Foster, he could walk into a big counter punch. And in the battle of the jabs, I talked about Vargas in for key for him. Well, Foster has done a much better job. He's thrown more, and he's landed more according to show stats. So wow, you take away Vargas's jab, you're taking yeah. away a big part of his playbook. Yep. A lot, a lot, because that's how he starts his, his, his setup. Any type of combination with the jab. He's missing a lot. Stop. Foss is doing the right, right thing, maintaining that distance and throwing that jab. He's a cut now yes. over the left eye of Vargas. And, uh, uh, you know, we're used to I seeing you. I got yeah. you. Stop. cuts you. involving... Ray Vargas, and you know when you look at his height and reach, major reason why those butts and cuts will remain an occupational hazard for Mr. Vargas throughout his career. Coming up on the final 30 seconds, and it's Oshaki Foster putting the pressure on. And again, continues to throw many more punches than the... Yeah, that Current 126-pound champion. Now, let's not forget that Vargas still is a 126-pound mm -hmm. belt holder. This is for a vacant 130-pound strap. He'll have to make a decision should he win, which weight class he wants to remain in. But right now, he is in tough against Oshaki Foster. Let's see if we can tell where... Vargas got caught if it kept now oh, that might have been it. Head. A jab that landed on the side of the eye. Oh, and there's a clash of heads, so that may have been it. A little bit of both, right? Yeah, could have been. And then the blood started to spurt. He's in here with uh, his head. So watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get some water. Let me get some water there. Quickly. Yeah. Ray Vargas family in attendance. His mother Alejandra, his sister Alejandra. Now, if he had a brother Alejandra, I'd be really impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Round number four. Now, I think that was a little better round for Vargas. Very, a closer round and one that, you know, you might make a case for him uh, because he, he did some, some better work in that round. So we'll see. Vargas trying to establish the jab early in round four. Yeah, Foster definitely not making it easy for him. Crowd here in the Alamo Dome in San Antonio trying to rally. Ray Vargas, although there are also chance for Foster. Foster, of course, from Orange, Texas, now located in Houston. Wanting to become the latest fighter out of Houston to win a title. And Houston's doing very well for himself right now with the Charlo <laughs> Brothers bet. Regis Program. Yeah, you bet. And, and Vargas doing enough trying not to open up too much. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's he's, a danger yes. if he does that. He's being smart. He's, he hesitates to throw the right hand, but he does not let go because he doesn't want to give Foster an opportunity to land the right hand. He was more aggressive against McSayo. He believes Foster, he told us, he thinks Foster's a better overall fighter than McSayo was. 
that what we've seen today. <laughs> the police yeah. boss are giving him a lot more work. Stop. Even though McTyre is a right. very good fighter. Yeah, of course. Styles make fights at the end of the day. And if that's the case, opponents make styles. <laughs> just past the midway point of the fourth. Lead right as Foster lunges forward, tracking Ray Vargas. Vargas resorting to using the jab upstairs and downstairs. So Vargas' opponents only normally land, oh, nice run by Foster. There's that counter right from him. Normally land only 1.7 jabs against him around. Foster is landing more than that. He normally lands five. He's got 24 over the first three rounds. Again, he always has that advantage, Vargas fighting smaller fighters. Yes, it's not exactly. his fault again, and, and this time he's fighting a, 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 you could say, physically bigger guy as well. And Foster. I got you, stop! Break, gracias, thank you. And Vargas got off to a good start in this round, but Foster has turned things around. Great attempt there from Vargas to the body right hand. Nice jab from Foster as we complete round number four. Keep it up. Listen. When you start to walk forward, I need more feints. Yeah, uh, okay. Is he getting a little, he's getting goofy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You should walk him back with those hard double feints. Okay? I got you. Take deep breath. Yeah, you will. Stay smart in there. Yeah, take some deep breaths. Everything's fine. Yep. Complete control. Now off the feints, when he throws that goofy shit. Aaron, you want to touch that? Off that goofy shit, go for the counter. All right. Oh, Shockey Foster, who has his brother, Damaris in attendance, he's really the backbone of his six siblings, the five brothers and a sister, losing his mother when he was 12, and cancer there out in full force. And exactly, exactly. And they're willing to get their kicks here tonight as Oshaki Foster <laughs> hopes to take care of Ray Vargas and Oshaki Foster off to a terrific start so far. Yeah. Bobby Benton, interesting, the advice he gave him. You know, I feints if you're gonna move forward and if, if Vargas shows what he called that goofy shit, he means, <laughs> he means <laughs> I'm quoting, I'm quoting, he means wide punches, you gotta counter him. That's 25 cents in the square jar. I'm, I'm just quoting. I'm quoting There's Bobby a nice Benton. right hand over the top by Foster. Probably the first time in my 42-year hey, career I've used that word. With inflation, it's $25. Okay. And there's Vargas with the left hook. So Vargas needs to make adjustments, Abner. What yes. kind of adjustments does he need to make? There's, there's one of them right now. Land that right hand. Yeah. The star being in command with the jab. Take the jab away from Foster. Be first. You know, many things that Vargas should be doing different. Oh, and Foster backs Vargas up. You can't let Foster get off first. And that's the thing about Oshaki Foster. Look, we saw him box a lot. When he wants, though, he can be a good, aggressive fighter. It's intriguing. He, I called him a shapeshifter. He really is. 11 of his 19 wins have come via knockout. He said we're going to see speed, strength, IQ, and fireworks. He's here to put on a show and prove to the world that Oshaki Foster is here to stay. And we gotta talk about how calm Foster looks. Mm -hmm. So relaxed, and let's not forget, this, this is his first title attempt. Well, you bring up a great point, Andrew, because in his Showbox debut, he actually yes. froze in the moment and was unable yes. to lift himself to the moment and lost to Sam Tia. Tonight, in his first title fight, he's been, in, you know, the exact opposite. Most people felt the, the thing that could derail him tonight is the moment was too big for him, and it's clearly this. not. Now, Vargas, you know, he's right there with the opportunity. Some of those punches are just not quite getting there, but he's gonna have to find a way to get him there. 
I mean, you can just imagine how frustrated Vargas is also. You see? Not being able to land anything. Yeah. Well, mostly anything. In the corner of your screen, Regis Progray, 140 pound belt holder on his feet, supporting a shocking Foster. Emotionally invested in this fight. And there's a right uppercut by Vargas. And again, that long distance right uppercut out that cost him against Maxayo. Yeah, he did get the right hand in there a little bit. But now he's to the body. Yeah, he, but he's starting to, to wind up with those punches. And that's going to be dangerous in terms of counter. There was a camera left from Foster. Exactly. A beautiful change in trajectory. So good beginning to the round for Foster. He became the aggressor. There's the, the left hook. is isn't a great one, but then he throws yet another and gets that one in better. So early on, Foster's the aggressor. Now he's boxing, and there's that, that the wild uppercut. right uppercut from Vargas. He didn't counter it, and actually Vargas, he snuck in maybe half of a right hand, but we may see it get countered. And then Foster getting him on the ropes, and land, landing a couple of pretty decent punches. And throwing that jab from the hip, Abner, and we yes. talked about that as well, where you can turn that into a left hook even from where that, from where he's throwing it. And the advantage that he has is that he's so well in both positions, righty and lefty, that when he throws it, he can land himself in the position where he's lefty, and he can continue to throw punches. Round number six, scheduled for 12 for a vacant 130-pound title. Now, Vargas normally lands 68 punches per round, more than Foster. Tonight, though, Foster has thrown about 70 more punches than Vargas, so it's a change. He just, Vargas just can't find that rhythm. That the distance at all, missing those three shots, eight, four, five. And, and, and Foster remains calm, cool, and collected. You guys have talked about it, but really here he is at 29 years of age, first opportunity and a title, and you couldn't really ask for much more thus far. Seriously, I mean, based on, you know, the, the, the come up to this fight, everything that he went through, we talked about it, and, and to really live up to the moment, you know, great for Foster. You're calling him in sometimes. Well, you look at the total punches, and I alluded to the fact that Foster's more active than Vargas, which isn't their history. And, of course, he's also landing more. And I guess Maul pointed out earlier, boxing scoring yeah. round per round. But when you're ahead a little bit, it's helpful. Vargas's percentage is equal to my algebra test scores in high school. Not a good night for you, Ray Vargas. But now going to the body, getting busier as Foster continues to work upstairs. Man, but there, 16%. But there he is, letting Foster push him back. Vargas has to be on top of him. When he did, he's supposed to stay in there. And Ray Vargas is used to being a boxer in fights, but this feels a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just a little bit different because he's not facing some guy, uh, like for instance, Mark Rexile, uh, chasing him, but in a way that wasn't as technical as Foster is. And also, not as elusive as Foster is in terms of not getting hit. There's Vargas throwing a right hand blocked by Foster. Nice right hook to the body by Vargas. And we have to point out, it's not like Foster's landing a ton of no. punches. So these rounds could be pretty close. And I was going to ask Abner, we talked about adjustments that Vargas needs to make. What does Foster need to do to continue to assert himself? Oh, it's just, I mean... I like what I'm seeing right now, the pressure. Sometimes he backs up, he, he's never on the ropes, counters well, he makes more Vargas miss, he makes him pay. Although Vargas did land a nice combination to the body there in that exchange. But one thing that Foster has not lost, and that's what's, that's what's gonna, gonna get him the win, is that jab. Yeah. And you know, a moment ago, Foster landed a straight right hand. I think we're gonna see a little more of that as this fight goes on. Let me. Let 
Echale a apretar. Eh, te quiero ahí. I want you right there. Vaya. Fighting. Agüita. 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 Deja de la agüita. Me quiero el agua. Abajo. Just keep throwing. You start the jab and then throw the right. Hit the ribs. Hit the ribs. I mean, está bien. I mean, está bien el round. Descansa. Take one more deep breath. It's good. It works. Huh? Well, we mentioned him a few times tonight. Let's take a closer look at Oshaki Foster's. Stay smart. Well, Houston, buddy, that's Regis Progre, who knocked out Jose Zapata in the 11th round to capture a vacant 140-pound title. So he's a a champion, and he he wants Oshaki. Foster to join him as a belt holder. We just program Showbox uh, alum as well. Yeah, Oshaki Foster went two and two on the Prospect Series, and as we mentioned, looking to become the 88th yeah. Showbox alum to win a title. Kudos to Gordon Hall and everyone associated with yeah. Showbox and the the many champions they produced. That's for sure. All right, speaking of Showbox, yeah, this Mr. is what you call a segue. Mr. Showbox, our unofficial score, Steve Farad, how do you have it after six? Mo, I have uh, Foster totally in charge here. What I see coming from Vargas, and I think the judges are seeing the same thing, a lot of punches, long punches that are not landing. Foster's defense is winning in this fight. I've given him every round but one. I have Foster ahead 59-55 at the halfway mark. Yeah, and when you start dictating the pace of the fight, you know, you pretty much got the fight in, in the bag, and that's what Foster's been doing this entire fight. And he's looking to secure the bag, the big one. Yeah. That comes with being a champion, and Foster helps the aggression. And you know, who you talked about changing, but he has stayed a righty for the fight. Remember in the last fight you talked about, yes. Mark, the reason, the reason he switched after round one is it wasn't working, so I said, I'll be a lefty. Yep. But it's working as a righty, so he's staying that way. Someone mentioned shape shifting. <laughs> I said that. And now, that's a scary thing, though. Imagine if he switches to softball, a, a stance yeah. that Vargas hasn't seen in, in a yeah. long time. <laughs> in 10 years, Vargas hasn't faced yeah. a lefty in a decade. Yep. And yes, Foster's content keeping it orthodox and and Vargas now coming forward, forced to be more aggressive and trying to land these combinations. You know, I think the biggest headline in this fight is the defense of Foster. It's just that Vargas isn't able to get some of those punches home. They look like they might land and they don't. They don't and that's what that's what really not letting Vargas get in. Well, Vargas sees that he's not landing anything. There's no reason why he's going to continue to throw. Well, we've seen throughout his career and as well as Foster doesn't mind being in the pocket, loves to use that aggressive counter-punching to break down his opponents. But the jab and there's that left hook keeps backing up Vargas, the two-division champion looking to add a third title in a third weight class while Foster would love to be crowned champion here in his home state of Texas. There's a left hook from Vargas. You know, Vargas has a good left hook. And when he doesn't throw it real wide in this fight, it could be an effective weapon for him. Maybe that's something he wants to go to a little more to see if he can get it in. Better round for Vargas. Mm -hmm. It is. Huh. He's ready to fold. He's ready to fold, but you're pulling out too far. You're pulling out too far. So let's work some catch and react. All right. Okay. Make sure we're All touching right. that. You feel comfortable soon. doing it? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Just don't, just don't let him hit you. Stay tight though. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The catch and reacts there. You're missing. I'm, he's just a little bit out of range. You know, when you, whenever you pull back, uh -huh. he's just a little bit. You well, early on in the round, we saw Foster, and this has been kind of a pattern the last few rounds, coming in, trying to use the left hook. Now Vargas doing a pretty good job of slipping those punches there. And we've talked about Foster's defense as well, of course, is he, you know, he's just not allowing, just lands that right hand to the body and then Vargas throwing a three or four punch combination and nothing gets there. Now, later in the round, we talked about Vargas's left hook landing. That was a pretty nice one. It wasn't the perfect left hook, but Vargas has a good hook. Can he find a home for that? The 
I like something that I saw towards the end of the last round from Vargas, which was him getting off with the jab first. Nice. He's got a right hand for that. by Foster in the lead, left hook. Lands for Foster the beginning of the eighth round. And that last round from Vargas, that's, he improved it. Let's see if he can build on that. Yeah, especially that left hand from Vargas. Yeah. It's, it's been able to get a little bit, a little bit better now. Yeah, when you look at these, you know, uh, these numbers, uh, the, the fact is that Vargas g goes the distance. He hasn't had a knockout in uh, what uh, several a number since of years. Yeah, since 2016. Um, so he doesn't. He's a good finisher, mind you. Very good finisher. He has great uh, three or four rounds to finish a fight. He just he doesn't get knockouts in fights. Foster himself has been 12 rounds, one, one, uh, one fight, and he scored a knockdown in the 12th round, so he also can close well. Vargas able to utilize his footwork. Foster is tracking him, not cutting off the ring, and then needs a body shot. Couple more body shots from Vargas. That was a good exchange from Vargas right there. One of the best I want to say from this fight. Yeah. Gets countered though with a sharp yeah. right hand from Foster. Yeah, that was a beautiful counter from Foster. And I'm not sure it didn't momentarily uh, stun Vargas. Speaking of that, headshots landed, Foster doing a lot more. Although Vargas has expected knowing or has to know what's going on, getting more aggressive, putting together some good combinations here in the eighth final minute. But Foster again picking his spots, effective with the power in the body, now leading the dance. This is a close round, right, but is. You, you have to feel like maybe Foster, I think, has done a little bit more in this round. I agree. And one thing that stands out the most, the, the rhythm that, that he changes in between rounds, Foster. That's what's helping him as well. At least for the, for the judges, it seems like he has a guy who's pressuring and doing the most. Well, 20 seconds for these two 130 pounders to make tonight crazy eights. Uh, both of the previous two fights ended in the eighth, but this one looks like it will go to the ninth. Vargas and Foster vying for a vacant 130-pound title. Hey. Keep it up to the distance and then work that jab. When you do it, you're doing fine, but you got to keep doing it. Get that jab, and then you get it with the right. Nine round, the eighth is over. The combinations. If you get him into the rounds, mm -hmm. you get him into the uh, corners and work it. division champion Oshaki Foster hoping to realize his lifelong dream of having a belt around his waist. You know, Vargas went to England uh, to yep. win his first title against Adam McDonald, good fighter, and he has fought excellent opposition in all his title defenses, defenses including uh, a tough one against Hazat Hovhannisian uh, in a very close decision. So he's used to fighting good fighters. Tonight, this is and making up close out. Yeah, and we see Vargas that closing in. Yeah, according to Steve Farhart, our unofficial score, um, things getting tighter here. With Vargas doing pretty well in his last couple of rounds. I like that stop, balance stop. that Foster okay, right. started with. Don't measure. He was able to land a, a, a uh, hook on top of Vargas, and it all started with that balance on his feet. 
and let's say this right now. These are very, some of these rounds are going to be close. So Stop. Break. This fight could Break. be all over the map in terms of scoring. And talking amongst ourselves and reading all the, the reports and the pundits, it was expected to be a, a close encounter of the 130 pound time. Some combinations by Vargas. Vargas is getting more active here in terms of throwing those combos. Not everything landed, of course, and there's a nice little kind of right by Foster, but he is trying to be more offensive. Yeah, getting off a lot more. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of these referees look at that. Even if you're not landing it, they, you, they see you being the pressure fighter. <laughs> they, they sometimes give you the round. Especially in fights like this, that where you really haven't seen like many clean punches landed. Yeah, under a minute left in the ninth, three punch combination by Vargas. A lot of it was by Foster. Foster with a short right hand across the jawline. Left hook by Vargas. Yeah, that's the punch that he's going to bank on a little bit, I think, as his fight. And that was a, a good one. Again, a close round, guys. Very much so. Both had the moments. Yeah, 42 to 40 in terms of punches thrown Stop. for Vargas, and he leads 15 11 in terms of total punches landed. And we've seen a momentum shift. Yeah, according to Joe Scott. And according to what we've seen here. Yeah. Right. I'm just pointing out. Absolutely. And guess what I'm going to point out for you, Al, since you liked it so much the first time. What is that? Here at Ronaldo Al Bernstein, Abner Mars <laughs> ringside, we've got Brian Custer and Brian Campbell with us, and of course, the always classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. and Showtime Championship Boxing's crew bringing you this triple header from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Seconds up. The vestiges of battle on the face of Ray Vargas. Oshaki Foster not showing as much damage, but he has tasted some of the power from Ray Vargas. And again, Ray Vargas, 36 and 0, 22 mm -hmm. knockouts, yes. but not exactly known for his pop. No, as it were. but I'll tell you what he is known for, and we're headed into round 10. He is consistently won rounds 10 through 12 in most of his fights and so this fight is very close if he can repeat that he, and you see the scoring on cue there the officers are scoring with this fight very very close and uh, foster i mentioned had a 12 a knockdown in the 12th round of the fight he went 12. we'll see who finishes better and this is kind of what's going to make this fight interesting, too, because if Barga lets, lets off, you know, Foster's going to have a lot of more opportunities to counter, too. Yes, right. That's a very good point. Yeah, Foster and, in that last fight out you were mentioning against Mohamed Yakubov in the 12th round where he cruised to that unanimous decision victory and set him up for this title opportunity. And Vargas now getting more aggressive, going to the body, working the inside. Yen gets countered, though, upstairs. Left hook from Foster. You know, honestly, I do wonder, though, why would Foster ever turn lefty just as a different look? It's intriguing. He almost never fights the whole fight in, in one posture. Any fight, yeah, you're right. I guess, the, you know, he had a reason, and, and during long stretches, he'd been successful. And guess what? He's having a pretty good 10th round here. Well, and again, we go to the, the, the research and stuff, and the fact, like you mentioned, Al, that it's yeah. been a decade since Vargas yeah. faced the lefty, knowing how good Foster can be from some yeah, that's that's interesting. But he's working as an orthodox and acquitting himself well here. Yeah, this has been a good round for Foster. And um, again, it's the round that Vargas is accustomed to doing well in. Mixed chance. You hear Vargas' name being chanted. You hear Foster's name being chanted. Convivial atmosphere. Great fight tag, San Antonio, Texas. And we are headed into the championship rounds here. 42 seconds left in the 10th. And this is a really clean, smart fight that both fighters are fighting right now. Both thinkers not just letting go punches because they need to. Well, Varg is obviously there. But, you know, Foster being the smart guy and, and, and being able to, to counter. 
A cut appeared on Vargas' left eye midway through. Round three, his corner's done a great job of making sure it doesn't become an issue. And if there's, in the way where the cut is, it's not going to fall into the eye. And it, it, they've done a great job of uh, working on that cut. And we've got to give a shout out to Miguel Angel Duran, who is Ray Vargas' cut man, as we go to the championship rounds in San Antonio. Hey. No, I'm just saying. No, I, 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 yes, get busy. Yeah, but you, there's more there for you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's way more there for you. Yeah. Let's close we'll the stay. goddamn show. Make a statement, yeah, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Still stay smart on yeah. defense. But yeah. fuck his yeah. ass up, okay? One, two, three, everything. Are you going to repeat that? Yeah. 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 There's way more there for you. <laughs> Take a deep I will not quote everything that's said in that corner. Here is. The, you know, Vargas not getting everything in and fought, the, but they were exchanging a lot in that middle part of the ring. And there's the nice mm. left hook that Foster landed. He had a good counter right in the early on in the round as well. And Foster had himself a very good 10th round. Championship rounds are upon us. The bell goes. This is round 11. Ray Vargas, 7 and 0 in title fights. All have gone the 12 round distance. So Shockey Foster comes off a 12 round unanimous decision win. And you know, what Bobby Benton said there was, you have to be defensively responsible, but you have to make a statement. Yes. And uh, they understand it. You know, you're in against a, a two-time champion, uh, you know, a name in the sport, a superb fighter, and, you know, he's the newcomer, Oshaki Foster. And we talked about, you know, come on, come on. The, the, there's Vargas. He he wins these 12-round fights. Foster's then only had, had one Last and fight. won them. And Vargas, when he gets those 12, he wins them. Because, <laughs> of course, he's won everything as a pro. So drama building here at the Alamo Dome. And there's the left hook again by Foster backing up Vargas. Vargas on the ropes, exiting to his left. Did he stop Vargas with that? And and he just looks like it. it. Foster fighting like the bigger man. Not the taller man, but the bigger man tonight. Well said, Being able to push Vargas back. And he listened to, to his call. He's trying to make a stand. Steve Ford on his unofficial scorecard gave Foster the last round, gave him a little more breathing room in a fight that has definitely tightened up. But Foster, and again, Vargas come on, come on, pushed come on, down. Come on, come on. Foster wanting to deliver on his trainer's instructions, wanting to make a statement. And that says a lot about the energy levels, too, from Vargas. He's been down two, three times already with just a little push to the ground. And the swelling around both eyes, the nose. Vargas knows he's been in a fight. And, you know, Foster's done well against the uh, tall fighters. John Hernandez, uh, wow. an example, a good light. Guy was 16 and 0 with 14 yes. knockouts in a row, and Foster went in and. <laughs> Foster was a big oh, yeah, in the yeah. fight. Yeah. So he can do it right. against uh, taller fighters, and we've seen evidence of that tonight. And now chance of Foster ringing out throughout the cavernous Alamo Dome. Let me put it this way. This is a fight, if you're judging it, you better pay attention to everything that's happening if you're going to, you know, get a good verdict. And, it, and it's a... Touch from the judge. It is. Stop. Stop. In this round in particular, I think that Fox was just landing the most clean punches and, and just putting that pressure. The last two rounds, I think he said that about him. As I pointed out, Fox has a history of closing strong, not so much tonight. The fight could very well be hanging in the balance. Final three minutes to crown a new 130 pound belt holder. Okay, no te expongas. Couple the risk here, but take him. You gotta take him. Remember the jab and then the right. The jab and then the uppers are also available.
Yeah. All right. Finish out strong and let's get this belt done. Uh, it's yours. Take a deep breath. <laughs> this is a championship, baby. Yeah, this is it, son. Cheers. Let's get it. One more deep breath. Let me see your gloves. Lock him up. Confidence oozing out of Oshaki Foster's corner. Three minutes left. Three minutes left to change Oshaki Foster's life at her. I mean, again, we can't, I can't say it enough. The great back, background story that he has. What he had to overcome to, to be where he is right now, getting the biggest opportunity of his life and really living up to a moment. Vargas's dad telling him to be smart, but needs to take some risks. So yeah. it appears that their corner believes that he may indeed need yeah. the knockout. And uh, our unofficial scorer, Steve Farhood, has Foster now opening up a three-point lead. So according to Mr. Farhood, Vargas does indeed need to score the knockout to become a three-division champion. Of course, that's how so she yes. demonstrates a nice move by Foster. Foster. The left hook. Here's the point. Foster's never been down in his pro career. Even a knockdown for Vargas might help him a lot on the scorecards. But Foster's never been down. And it's Foster dictating the terms exactly. again in round 12. Exactly. I was just about to say, and it almost seems like the urgency is from Foster trying to win this round, not from Vargas. But then again, this is your first attempt at a world title. You got to finish and, it like that. And for both fighters, a minute 42 left, and, and you heard it from Vargas' okay. corner. It's now or never. You have to let everything go. The body language tells you everything right now. Vargas looks a little bit fatigued, and he's not uh, getting his punches off very really well. There was a right hand earlier that, that Foster landed. That it almost seemed like it hurt Vargas. Again, the body language is, is, is fatigued from Vargas. I got you. Wait, 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 wait. The betting odds were close. Vargas, for some slight favor. A minute away from well, delivering the message on his trunks, looking to shock the world here tonight. Fans beginning to stand. 45 seconds left. And you know, the, the, the optics of this, at the end of this fight, the one coming forward is Foster. Now, it's not like Vargas didn't land anything in this round, but it's Foster pressing the attack. Emmanuel Navarrete moved up to 140 last week and won a title. Hector Luis Garcia, Shevchen Rakamov also hold 130 pound titles. Who will fill the last vacancy? Ray Vargas wanting to join his illustrious compatriots as a three division champion. Regardless of the outcome, what a remarkable story it has been for Shaki Foster. We talked about whether this moment would be too big, it definitely was not. And for Ray Vargas, giving it all he could, moving up immediately after winning the 126 pound title. Didn't defend it, said, no, I want to dare to be great. I'm going up to 130. And it a bridge too far. Yeah, look at the numbers, which tell an interesting tale here. You know, the amount of difference of what was landed according to show sets is dramatic. Um, it's a big, relatively big number. Again, it's scored by rounds. But the interesting thing is, a lot more jabs landed by Foster than the people mostly land against Vargas. And again, the body language says a lot, and, 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 and who wants it the, the most? And we saw that urgency, from, and it wasn't even urgency, it's just the way he wanted to fight, and Foster pressuring the fight. And let's go inside the ropes to look at this fight in microcosm. And it was an intriguing matchup. It wasn't a pure six ball, but early on, Foster, who came out as a righty and never changed, landing those right hands. 
And you see him pressuring Vargas, and he did pressure him at various points in this fight. Not always, but when he did, he was effective. The left hook of Vargas was a weapon that in the middle rounds was effective, and there he lands it again. There was a period where Vargas was able to use that punch very effectively. But the countering of Foster there became an important issue, and when they exchanged, it was mostly Foster that did better. And finally, Foster in the later rounds having good moments and roughing up Vargas in round 12. He was the aggressor in the last three rounds. Normally Vargas wins the last three rounds. He might have lost all three. Let's find out who walks out of the Alamo Dome 130 pound belt holder. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. We have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, David Sutherland scores about 116 to 112. Tim Cheatham sees it 117 to 111. And Alejandro Rochin scores about 119 to 109. All three in favor of the winner. He is now the WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Oshaki Foster. What a moment for Oshaki Foster holding his young son. Orange, Texas is now. Ice water in his veins. Oshaki Foster is a new 130 pound belt holder, knocking Ray Vargas from the ranks of the undefeated. Let's go to Brian Campbell. Oshaki Foster. Your home city of Orange, Texas, has just become title town. How does this feel? Man, it feels great, man. This journey been crazy, man. I, I, man, I just want to thank God, man. Thank everybody that, that came out, you know, everybody that put on the event, Schaefer, uh, Al, PBC, Showtime, man. I appreciate the opportunity, man. This m victory marks an incredible personal journey for you. Six years ago, your life did not look like this. What's the reason you've been able to climb this mountain? Man, dedication, hard work, man. I, had my, I, had great, I got a great team around me, man, and you know, just getting away from the distractions, getting myself mentally and physically right, you know, and now, you know, I'm, I'm on top, man, <laughs> it's crazy. Let's talk about this fight. Your opponent, Ray Vargas, the jab is a big part of his attack. Tonight, you limited him to 12% connection. How important was that? Uh, it was very important. I, I, I seen uh, on, on tape that, you know, that's how he got off a lot of his uh, combinations. He kind of reacted off his opponent, so I tried to, you know, switch up my attack, give a lot of fangs before, you know, going in every time. Vargas made the fight more competitive in the middle rounds. How were you able to prevent a late rally, which is normally a part of his championship reign? Man, uh, my coach just kept telling me, you know, pick it up, be ready to go. But, you know, we couldn't get him out. But, you know, I, I felt good in the later round. So, you know, I just wanted to press him and make sure it wasn't close. If there was any doubt on the scorecards, you changed that in round 12, outlanding Vargas 20 to 5. Did you think the fight was close still entering the final round? No, nah, I didn't think it, think it was close, but my, like I said, my coaches kept staying on me to, know, you know, not let off the gas and, uh, you know, just not make it close. So I wanted to close the show. Uh, look, shock the world has been a big part of this. Ice water. Here you are all these years later, through the boxing politics, through the layoffs. How do you even put into words what this journey has been like? Man, I can't, I can't even put it into words, man. Uh, you know, I just know, I just know my moms, my grandma, you know, my uncle and them, they all looking down on me, man. Uh, it's just been a, it's been a tough journey, but a great outcome, man. 
You're the WBC champion at 130 pounds. What's next for you moving forward in this division? Man, I, I would love to unify, but you, I think we got two mandatories we got to fulfill. But, you know, I definitely want to unify. Uh, Garcia, Navarrete, uh, the winner of Cardina and old buddy. You know, I'm up for anybody, you know. I feel like my style is, 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 is my, I can adjust to anybody. I feel like I can beat anybody out there. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Ray Vargas, Felix de Jesus will translate. Ray, what was your opinion of the decision? ¿Qué te opinaste de la decisión? Pues, ¿qué puedo decir respecto a los jueces? En lo personal no me pareció una una decisión muy amplia ni justa, pero tengo que respetar. I have to respect the judges. I thought it was a much closer fight, uh, but it, that's his decision, their decision. What was the difference between you and Foster in this fight? Foster esta noche. ¿Cuál fue la diferencia? Lo dije desde un principio. El peso tal vez intervino un poco, pero hay piernas para ser técnico y piernas para correr. Y creo que él tiene piernas para correr. I said it from the beginning. You know, uh, the weight might have been a little difficult to make and you know maintain. Maybe the power is a little different. Uh, but I said it from the beginning. It's more the legs and stuff. A headbutt appeared to open a cut around your right eye, left eye, excuse me, in round three. How did that affect you? Sí, sí, fue un cabezazo al principio de la pelea. Afecta un poquito la vista, pero no, eso no me impidió seguir con la con la técnica. Yeah, that affected me a little bit in the third round when he hit me, but that didn't affect anything in the fight. You're still a world champion at 126 pounds. Which weight division is the best fit for you moving forward? Sí, eh, realmente agradezco a toda la gente bonita que, que vino a apoyar, todos los mexicanos. Eso fue para México. No nos llevamos la victoria de, de, de Super Pluma, pero somos campeones eh, plumas. Y esto es un escalón, un avance más en mi vida. In my boxing and my life personal. First of all, I want to thank everybody that came out today, especially the Mexicans, the San Antonio. And there's another step in my life. You know, we might just go back to 126. Thank you, Ray. Let's bring it back to the ringside. All right, Brian, thank you very much. On the eve of the big game, we just witnessed the biggest win of Oshaki Icewater Foster's career. And Brian Custer mentioned it at the top of the telecast, the personification of perseverance and everything that he's had to go through. It's all worth it having that belt over his left shoulder. As we bring in our unofficial scorer, Steve Farhood, let's uh, analyze the official scores and then your unofficial total, sir. Will do, Mo. Well, for starters, the judges agreed on six of the 12 rounds, not that many. What, uh, what stands out among the official scores is Alejandro Rochin. He gave Vargas the first round and then gave Foster every round in the fight after that. Much closer on the cards of, of uh, Sutherland and Cheatham. Cheatham gave Foster the first five rounds, so he built a big lead. And Sutherland gave Foster five of the first six rounds. So on those two cards, Foster built a lead that he did not give up. As far as my card goes, I had it the same as Sutherland, 116-112. They gave Vargas seven, eight, and nine, but that was momentum he could not keep. Foster closing with the last three rounds and uh, a deserved winner on my card, Oshaki Foster. And I want to comment that sometimes in boxing we worry about nationalism and favoritism. Alejandro Rochin is from Mexico, and he actually, some would even argue that it was too one-sided for Foster, but the point is he was completely objective in his scoring. Oshaki's life has changed tonight. Great win from Foster, and uh, you know, I couldn't be any happier for him. And for Oshaki, Foster's hometown, orange is the new gold. He is a 130-pound champion. BC, back to you. Yeah, congratulations, Oshaki Foster. Listen, he, he was the bigger man, and I'm not talking height-wise, but just you can see it. He's a legitimate 130-pounder, and he showed it tonight. 
uh, considering everything this young man has been through to now be at the top of the mountain at 130 pounds, it is really a great story of a man who persevered through everything he's been through in his life. Listen, we caught, captured some audio in the corner during this fight, and we call it trainer tracks. Gentlemen, sure goddamn yeah, night. Nice. All that fucking hard work we put in, take it out on his ass. And just be patient, keep looking for that right hand. So now he's starting to reach with the right hand, right? Roll and counter that shit. I know it feels good to hit him in the head, but let's go to the body a little bit more, okay? Because you started to catch him clean. I told you he's going to get a little anxious, right? He's going to try to get a little rough with you. Just stay relaxed when he does that shit. Make sure you get control of him, right? Don't let him, don't let him get in with his head on you. Keep it at a distance and then work that jab. When you do it, you're doing fine. But you got to keep doing it. All he's doing is trying to keep you off of him. He ain't trying to win no more. He's trying just to keep you off of him. Don't let him do that shit. Don't coast. Now you got to unload. Unload everything. Okay, no thanks. You got to take a couple of risks here, but take him. You got to take him. Let's close the goddamn show. Make a statement, okay? Still stay smart on defense, but fuck his ass up. It's quiet. Smoke that ass, baby. Smoke that ass. Good shit, baby. A 10-fight win streak, and now the new WBC 130-pound champion.